Hello everyone. Today we are going to see about the power analyzer. So this power analyzer where it is used is in EV if you want to test like a motor's input and battery's output and based on the acceleration how the motor is behaving all those parameters you can see with the help of this equipment. So here we have uh, this equipment here this is a testing simulator where there is a motor coupled to a dyno where we can apply loads and the RPM can be varied and here you have the UVW of the motor in this UVW the sensors are connected basically current sensors voltage sensors are connected and after this this goes to a data logger you can see here the data logger this data logger is capable of like stacking the cards so if you want to stack more number of electrical cards here you can see two electrical cards here and this one is a mechanical card so this two electronic cards you can if you want to add the cards you can remove this and add the cards also so after that you can make more connections by this after this this mechanical card this is used for uh, like to test the vibration what is the stress supplied on this motor during a suspension if a vehicle is moving on a pothole or a bump how based on the suspension what is the impact transferred to the motor all those things you can see it here so uh, here today with us there is Sujit from HPK uh, so he will be just showing us how if we vary the motor's RPM how the uh, graph is varying all those things we can see it here so can you show it? Yeah, so thank you Sandhya. I think uh, he very well explained the, about the product. And majorly I'll just set, touch certain key points. Already in the automotive domain or I would say in the EV domain, lot many power analyzers are available. But what made, what makes us different from them is, of course the power analyzers traditionally were always there to measure the voltages and the current and calculate the electrical power and all. But when we integrate this into an EV domain, it has to make sure that the mechanical parameters and the electrical parameters need to sync themselves together. So this is the power where which brings you to integrate the mechanical and the electrical setup synchronized and you can probably understand that if I am running the vehicle in a motor mode, which is the battery is powering the motor in that regard or in the other way around which is the generator mode that my vehicle is charging the battery so whether it's a hybrid or it's a motor generator all the setups can be easily done here measured accurately precisely and it allows you to do a lot of analysis such as torque ripple space vector bq0 armature gap copper losses iron losses mechanical losses all such analysis can be easily done over this system so that's the major forte and of course uh, I think this is one of the best system which already in India is established with major EV OEMs. So whether it's a startup company or an established automotive giant, they all love to work on the C-Drive system. Sir, so now we can see like how it is performing. So example like I can vary the motor RPM. So you can show the graph reading where it is varying all those things. So I'll increase the motor RPM. Here you can see there is uh, there are buttons to increase the motor RPM. Here you can see on the console part, we have a torque sensor. The torque sensor itself has a torque and a RPM sensor. I think Sanjay is controlling the console where you can see the torque. As right now he's increasing the, uh, the RPM. Similarly, we can decrease down those RPMs. So as I said, the system, I think Sanjay mentioned that the system is taking the inputs from the sensors. So one of the sensor is which is here, the torque sensor, giving the torque and the speed data to the system. And here you can see, right now, I think he's decreasing down the... Mm. Now I will increase the torque, sir. Yeah, I mean, you can just first increase the RPM part of it. Yeah. So here you can see the RPM reading going high above. And if you see here, the green one, what you see, this, this one, is the uh, torque reading going in. Similarly, I think if you just decrease down on the part, and now you can see the RPM going down on this. So from here you can take many outputs like what is the voltage consumed from a motor based on the accelerator pedal. So all those things you can map a reference value in your MCU and keep it for a validation purpose. All those things can be done with the circuit. Easily, correct. So this is the purpose like when we do the R&D part of it, we generally run the motors on the dynos to have the perfect ideal scenarios. One, two scenarios are there. 
we can replicate as the master data and then we can compare the real data which is on the road once the vehicle is running on the road i can compare down and understand that what all those essentialities have to be maintained when i have to improve my vehicle when it is actually hitting the road so we will see another equipment where we can show the graphs of the uh, strain uh, then uh, force applied all those things we can see in another equipment so we can go there today we have patel fashidar with us from hpk so he is going to show us how different like load sensor strain sensor how it is going to operate and how we can see the parameters in this uh, we can see it from in a fish so coming to this so here wow, this is the DAC this is the DAC where the sensors are connected so this is the load sensor this is the strain sensor this is the accelerometer and we have a thermocouple connected to this DAC so this DAC takes all the readings from this and it, uh, it has a storage device if you see the bottom this is a data storage device so this is used to store data when the, when the vehicle is running you have to store the data so this DAC is used to in that case so if you are not storing in that case, if you are using in a laboratory setup, then you don't want to use this stack. So you can connect this first stack directly to this system and you can uh, log the graphs here in your laptops. Okay. So, sir. So here basically we are uh, looking at the durability setup. Okay. Wherein we validate the structural durability. Okay. We uh, uh, basically this device is, is a rugged data activation. System. So this is me. The your vehicle on the road on the go. Example like majorly it is used in off-road vehicles. It can be more useful here thing. So like off-road vehicles like excavators. Uh... Okay, right. So basically off-highway vehicles, you know, wherein you have a lot of shocks and vibrations coming on to your vehicle. The test device which are using on those vehicles should withstand high shock and high vibration levels. So this is mainly designed to be used in those applications. Okay. So example like uh, we have a chassis structure where there is going to be a load acting on it. So example our passengers are going to sit on it. So we can use this sensor yes. Sir. So you can show that sensor how it is. So basically this is a universal module. This can be used along with the recorder. Now wherein whatever data you acquire in this module to get stored in this device. So this is basically used on the vehicle. Okay, wherein you don't want to sit with your laptop in you know, acquiring data. But if you want to do the same testing in the lab, but then only this module can be connected directly to your laptop. Wherein our software is installed, it can see the data. So, clearly like in a track you want to test it, then that time you can use that, this record recorder. And if you want to analyze the data after track recording, then you can use this laptop and you can do. So basically, you know, when uh, in the one more application is in the lab, you have super testing, post post statistics and all. Uh, wherein you can sit with your laptop okay there you can use the model directly with your laptop or not with the recorder okay understood there are a lot of flexibilities are available uh, in this particular problem right okay uh, so this model is a universal data acquisition model which is of eight channels okay wherein you can right now for demonstration purposes we have connected a uh, load cell strain gauge okay accelerometer and thermocouple okay so uh, as you can see by applying maybe if I apply load here we can see it in display as well so basically you know this the red line the graph whatever I say okay this is load versus time okay the moment you press here you can see the spikes coming over here yeah okay so this is one of the application where you know basically you you in the vehicle if you want to understand you know the the brake force or the clutch force you know the, the you press it yeah how much force you are applying here yeah. okay how much force is required to you know uh, for put that load onto that pedal okay in those applications this can be used like a steering sensor like a steering you how much torque is applied on steering so this will uh, this sensor may be used to yeah this sensor is basically load sensor for steering torque measurement you know the effort required to roost is there okay there is uh, something called as steering torque sensor yeah it is with with your column yeah okay so there you can those torque sensor can also be connected to this data acquisition system to acquire the steering effort steering torque understood so that can also be done understood so yes next comes the straining uh, strain sensor maybe we will be using in a passenger seats to detect the passenger whether sitting or not so for that also straining sensors are used for, for that strain uh, 
sensors are also used uh, and load sensors are also used okay okay uh, so uh, and strain sensors are basically used to understand the strain coming on to a particular component okay you have a chassis or okay, you have a complete frame okay so you apply the sprain gauge pasted onto that chassis and acquire the sprain data into this logger okay understood sir uh next comes the accelerometer so basically it used to detect like how how fast the vehicle is moving and if sudden braking is applied how it is impacting on the vehicle so we will say it as a g sensor also yes so which will be used for various applications yes so that is actually when you you know when you take the vehicle on the road okay due to a lot of disturbance on the road you know the hums you know the the potholes and all those things uh the vehicle should withstand the reaction load coming on to the structure of your vehicle so how much vibration it is coming on to the vehicle that is that is measured using this accelerometer you can see okay okay the, the moment there is a vibration okay you can see the vibration there okay fine okay you can see this line the blue line see okay so this universal module caters to around 12 different type of sensors Okay, and you can connect eight sensors at a time because this is of eight channels. Understood. Yes. Thanks for the explanation, sir. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on an automotive testing experience.